and welcome back to another playthrough of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today I will start my playthrough series of all things zombie which seems to be yeah not just another zombie game it <laughs> seems to be the zombie game but let's see when you check out the board you will notice you will see some hexes and this is something you usually don't see too often on my channel. I really don't know, maybe this is really the very first playthrough of a game that consists of hexes, at least as far as I can remember. But nevertheless this is not really a war game or something like that. It has of course some similarities so you have to refer to some tables in order to resolve the reactions and stuff. But overall it's a scenario driven game so in this very first scenario I will come to that in a second. Basically those two main characters here Tonya and Beck they will try to find something and then have to leave the map. When I went through the rules the very first time I thought hey this seems to be a pretty straightforward game and I was really surprised but when you then really start playing this game you will sooner or later you run into a situation where you think wait what am I supposed to do now and here really the or the rules are sometimes not really helpful. Luckily there are great peoples on BGG and one of them in particular for this game was Zombie Mark who basically came up with this FAQ from the game and he's also very responsive when it comes to actual questions around this game. As far as I understood it's not an official FAQ in respect that the publisher has released it but he let us know that he basically get all the answers and confirmations by the designer himself. So I'm pretty confident that this FAQ is more or less official, at least I will use it for. Nevertheless, I will certainly mess some of the things up because there are always some situations on the world which I might still have misunderstood, but I will give it a go. And as usual, I'm open for all of your comments. So if you think I interpreted the rule completely wrong please let me know and yeah again I will try to correct them and if it if I totally will screw up I think I might really even considering to do a re-record of the session but let's wait and see here okay let's have a look at the first scenario and the good thing about those scenarios here you can play them all in some kind of a campaign so you start with a few bullets more I have not played it as a campaign yet I only played the first scenario now in order to get behind the rules and really confirm that I got it right but yeah again I will certainly mess it up but I really kind of like the campaign idea of this one here so I'm never really doing good and I'm let's say you are still interested I'm still interested I might really even consider to play it as a full campaign but of course I will start with the very first scenario here so let's have a look for a few bullets more Tonya ran back used to run the nightclubs searching the brightly lit Vega streets for a sucker with a fat wallet <laughs> now they just run searching for food ammunition and weapons but mostly weapons Two women with a yuppie's worth of karate skills aren't going to last long in a swarm of zombies and the 9mm pistols they carried to fend off aggressive tricks aren't stopping the uncaring, unfeeling undead. They need real hardware. They hope to find some in Last Chance, a small desert encrusted town outside Vegas. So let's have a look at the scenario rules. So we have two survivors, Tonya and Back. Both are carrying a 9mm pistol. Tonya has the luck of finding a medkit and Back at a yeah, box of ammunition basically. And they will both enter via the east edge of board one. We, I've already generated all the zombies. You're usually rolling six dice for each survivor that plays here in this case. I had to, I think, generate five zombies. Yeah, right now that's not too bad, but rest assured there will be a lot more coming. And this is really, you get, can get drowned in zombies relatively easy in this game. To win, Tonya and Back must each find an additional weapon and escape off the edge of the board or search every building and escape the board. 
So right now both of these lovely ladies carry a 9mm pistol. As mentioned Tonya has a med kit and in back here has a box of ammunition. Good thing is those weapons cannot really run out of ammunition. They have an out of ammo side to that and it will happen sooner or later that they will run out of ammunition. But you can reload that as a part of your action. You don't have to have an ammunition box in order to reload. The ammunition box itself is basically helping you when you run out of ammo, then you can basically flip it directly back to the active site. But other than that, you basically have unlimited actions. You just have to spend your action, which can be pretty tough because of course you only have one action during your activation. There are some buildings on the board, you see them here, 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 there and there. Those two tiles or two hexes buildings count as one building, so when you enter there and do a search action that's pretty much it. When you don't find a weapon here then you cannot go to the other room and search again. On the other hand these bigger buildings also help you because once you generated some zombies on one side of the building you also don't do that again on the other side. So to sum up the scenario winning condition, those two ladies will browse through those buildings here, hopefully find some weapons. We need one additional weapon per character. And the bad thing about this game is you cannot put we weapons into your gear. And so you only have two slots for that. So you cannot just whatever one character searching two additional weapons, giving one to the other lady that's not how it works of course I can always give one of my second weapon to the other player or other character but then I still have to find another weapon for myself so this is something that you have to keep in mind here if I'm not able to find weapons in those buildings I can also win the game when I really searched all the buildings but I still have to escape to either edge of the game board before we get started, let's have a closer look on our character. So here we have the so-called, let's call her main character. It's Tonya. Tonya is a so-called star. So you see a little star icon here on her character chit. Stars have for once normally a higher reputation or so this red value here and they can always choose their reaction which can be either good or bad but in most cases that's a good thing and but I will come to all of that when I play this game. Let's have a look at her tagline here. One day a model, the next day a poor man's Lara Croft. <laughs> this sucks. Okay so here are her attributes again. So we have the rep, we have her speed and we have her melee value. So how many dice she's allowed to roll when coming into melee. Then we have this value here. So once they get a certain amount of wounds, so in this case two wounds, you would have to flip her character token to the bloody side here and then this will reduce her reputation. But apart from that we are still okay and all the characters also have a special skill here. She is a crafty veteran of the zombie wars. Whenever required to roll a die or dice she may re-roll one die. But of course she has to live with the re-roll. And then there is Back. Back is a so-called grunt so she does not have a star on her character token so in this case you also see that she starts the game with only four rep but she has a five speed so she's a bit faster than that when she will be wounded she will lose also one rep her tagline says hey this beats turning tricks on the corner of third and main and her special ability says she's agile in melee she can require her adversary reroll one melee die and of course she also has to accept the second roll here. Now we should be good to go and the first thing that you always do in a given round is to roll for the initiatives and the rules say roll 2d6 of different colors and guess what here are the dice that ship with the game. So yeah you guessed it right I brought my own piece of dice basically with me so I will roll the black die for the zombies and the red die for the survivors in this case. Then you compare those results to the rep value of that. So for once the side whose role is higher would go first but then you still check which model or which miniature or which chit on the board will be allowed to get activated but I will show that to you in a second. Okie dokie let's roll the initiative dice again keep in mind black is zombies red is us. 
Okay, this is actually a very cool thing for us. Theoretically, the zombies will go first. Apparently, they rolled a six. We only rolled a three. But now you check the rep value of each of the yeah, miniatures or each of the zombie tokens on this side and you compare this to the die result. And basically you have to roll less or equal to your rep value in order to be allowed to activate. The good thing about this is now all zombies have a rep value of 4. And a 6 is not lower or equal to 4. It means in this turn or round none of the zombies will activate. Isn't that nice? So again, in this case, they theoretically would go first, but they cannot do that. Now we check our initiative roll. We have a three, Back has a four, Tonya has a five. So both of their rep is higher than what we actually rolled, which is a good thing. There is an additional rule to that. So once a grunt is adjacent to a star, she can use the rep value of the star here, which is really a good thing. So in this case, a five would be fine as well. If you want to stick to the terminology of the rule books, each character is now allowed to take an impulse when the value matches. So impulse means you are allowed to take your actions. You can move up to your movement values of five or four. You can take an action, you can move partially and then take an action and continue your move or you can do the action first and then move. So you have a lot of freedom of what you do. So for example, you can shoot, you can surge, you can heal. So there are all kinds of stuff. If you run into a herd of zombies, things might change. If you search in a house, also things might change a little bit. But overall, this is how things go. The order of activation is normally dependent on the amount of your reputation. So in this case, Tonya would always go first. But there is a house rule and I believe from what I read most or a lot of gamers use this house rule that to say you are allowed to choose your activation when you are allowed to do so, when, when, when it's your turn basically. So in this case, I could also decide to go with back first. And I think this is what I kind of like a little bit better because it gives you some more freedom on how to react on, yeah, on the board here. So I will play it that way. If you don't whatever agree to that, yeah, you can play it as you like. I will play it this way. Right now you might think, hey, just storm the houses and search for your weapons. Theoretically, I would agree to that because right now zombies seem to be pretty far away, but the movement value of those zombies is relatively high. So they move between three and four spaces as far as I know. So they can get up to you relatively soon. And as soon as I enter a house, most likely I will find some more zombies. So when I send both of those characters in two houses, I can easily end up with 10 or even 12 additional, maybe five, it's the highest card, I cannot quite remember, but at least maybe 10 additional zombies that are really close by to us. Again, they would not activate because their initiative role was not high enough, but still then you can imagine that things can get messy relatively soon. So, and of course, it's also an advantage to keep those two characters together because Tonya being the star can also give back the same initiative role. So this is always a good thing to keep them together. So I think I would rather go really house by house and try to keep them together as much as I can. So in this case, I think I will move back one, two, three space. I could also go one and two and maybe, yeah, this should, maybe this is what I will do. So you can always move through uh, hacks with another character, but you cannot end here. Zombies can stack, but characters never can. So in this case, yeah, let's do that. So let's move back first, one, two spaces. So now I entered a hex with a building, which means I have to draw one of those zombie cards here. Buff, and here we see the first three additional zombies we have to draw. The first thing that we would have to place is an entered token on this house. So this tells us, okay, when I enter this house again, I will not have to draw another zombie card. This is, of course, a good thing. When I search later on, I will flip this token to the search side. So you can also search a house only once yeah, during a game, basically. So let's draw the first zombie. So here we have one from the rep. They're all the same. They all have a four. They're really only, yeah. Yeah, the, the movement value does only 
matter in this case but they will also stick to the house so those are the four uh, three zombies we drew so we will put them on the house here as well and next we have to do a surprise check this is pretty simple you take the number of zombies and add them to a die roll so in this case that's a three plus the die so let's do use the black one again and you take the wrap of the appropriate character in this case that's a four so again this plus one only counts for the initiative roll so we are allowed to add four to the die roll of back here and whoever rolls higher of course will surprise the other side a tie is i think also in favor of the survivors in this case so let's see how well or how bad we will roll okay that's of course really does stink so in this case the zombies have a an eight i have only rolled a five so which means the zombie surprised us so i think i was kind of feeling pretty safe and then i opened whatever another door and then they were and basically directly attacking me normally if i would have won this surprise check i could have whatever moved out or shot first um, but in this case i directly have to dive into melee here's already some kind of confusion for me um I will not do a being charged test right now. So the rules clearly say I have to run into melee and this is how I play it. So normally now you take another roll and see if you whatever run away because you're outnumbered or such. In this case, I will really say we will enter melee. And now you're basically calculating successes. So again, you will do some die rolling and you will roll one die for each of the zombies and you will roll the melee dice for the characters. So in this case, that's only two. A success is always equal or lower to your rep value. So let's see, let's roll for the zombie first. Well, that's tough. Uh, that's two successes, so I can only tie here in this case. Mm, this really stinks, but I still have to roll lower or equal to my four here for back let's see perfect these are two four so we have a tie so neither side gets a wound if the zombie would have taken a wound we would just remove one zombie token and if back would have taken wound, we would have moved a wound marker accordingly but melee always ends your activation so she cannot do anything else right now this is something that really only was introduced in the faq this is nowhere mentioned in the rules but seems to be pretty important as it will change the game quite a bit but we still have tonya with us and now i'm already yeah regretting that i have not sent her in first because otherwise she the result might be a bit different here so in this case tonya will yeah has to help her friend here that's for sure so in this case she will fire into the building line of sight is okay unless there is not a rough terrain or another building in between she can directly shoot into the house in this case which she will absolutely do so now we check her weapon the nine millimeter pistol that's a three and a one it means the pistol has a range of three and she will roll one die in order to do that she could now do a panic fire which means she would get an additional die but panic fire automatically puts your weapon out of ammunition and right now i think this is not what i want to do so i will just roll one die and how can you run out of ammunition the other way so normally if you would roll two once on your basically roll here then you would run out of ammo apparently with only one die this will never happen with a nine millimeter pistol but of course on the other hand you will never do as much damage range is not a problem line of sight also not a problem so let's just roll her die in this case we will roll one die we will add her reputation to that value so that's the other way how you do tests in this game so let's hope to roll high in this case three plus five that's eight so let's check the range combat table so we rolled an eight target is a survivor in rough or building hex no target is not a survivor target is a zombie rush shot counts as miss we haven't done a rush shot and i think in this um co-op mode there is no real rush shot as far as i know target is a survivor at range or five hexes no 
also not a survivor target, is also not wearing a body armor. Second and third target was our first target. All others will hit, which means for one, we have removed one zombie here. That's already a good thing. The zombie just goes back to the cup of zombies, I think it's referred to. But as I fired one shot, we have to place a shot marker on the board. And this shot marker can potentially create another zombie for each of those shot markers you roll a die at the end of the round this was her activation in respect to action she can still move and i think she will move one more space ahead into this space here so bringing her closer to the house not sure if we will directly go into the house as of the next round in this game really you have to take your time in this scenario there is not really a timer well that you have to complete the game in 20 turns or so yeah this was basically the end of the round let's resolve the shot marker here let's roll a die every four five and six we'll call a another zombie let's see that's a five we will see another zombie so he heard the shot and then you see okay this zombie they always show a little thick line basically on one of the he edge, um, hexa sites and this will tell you where they come from and they normally come six spaces away but apparently they will he will come from here so that's one two and three so for entering the board he's allowed to be placed here but he's now pretty nearby so he will come towards us yeah possibly at the start of the next round then we will remove the shot marker here this has done his purpose and this ended the round Okay, let's start the next round. I think I will do at least one more. I think that as of now, things will move much faster. Let's roll the initiative dice first. Again, a six and a three. Wow, I'm really, really awfully lucky. Still, I start the, um, the game uh, with a, on a space with a zombie. So if I plan to stay there, I still have to fight. But the good thing is, theoretically they would go first so in this case i would have to fight them but there is no melee phase for the zombies because they don't have an activation or an impulse and i still have a three which is a pretty cool thing and i'm really tempted to have tonya start this turn as she might shoot into the house again and hopefully kill another zombie and then back could do her activation and maybe in a melee will be able to kill or yeah, destroy the other zombie they are apparently dead already so let's do that so i think she will once more fire her weapon into the house she will not do a panic shot again so again we will have to place a shot marker here we will roll the die and as we know eight or more is absolutely a hit in total six that's great more than enough to kill that zombie unfortunately we only shot one so either way we only can kill one zombie but we will remove that so let's take the faster one i'm also not sure if i can choose which zombie i killed or if i have to start from the top down but i will just remove the faster zombie from this pile now she could still move but i think i will not do that i will keep tonya close to back because yeah she can yeah, she's beneficial for tonya and now it's back's turn and I already noticed I forgot her agile special ability, which is, yeah, which really sucks because she could have done a damage. Ah, that sucks. Ah, damn, damn, damn. Okay. I will not redo that. So, yeah, I have to live with my error. But in this turn, the zombie will only roll one die. Apparently, there is only one zombie here, and she will still roll two um, dice. She could now still decide to move out. Then she wouldn't have to melee not sure if i want to do that because otherwise i can though or so i cannot take an additional action here so i think i will just stay here where i am and will try to fight the zombie because i'm allowed to roll two dice here so let's roll for the zombie first that's a five that's higher than his reputation so he misses so he does not have one success if we roll now one success here we are good, perfect, this is our success. So she was able to fend off that zombie. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, due to the FAQ, melee really ends your activation. So she can now not search the house, which is also a full action, which is really a pity. She could 
still no this is Anna. she can even not move so this is where she is right now but maybe during her next impulse she will be able to search through the house this is already the end of the round so we have to deal with the shot marker here no this time no zombie heard that shot so we are lucky so we can directly jump into the next round so let's roll the initiative dice four and a one okay again the zombie will go first and this case they have a four or lower so all of the zombies on the board will now move and then we will see most likely at least yeah i see one potential melee here but let's do the movement first we will also get activated which is a good thing but we have to go last in this case Let's start with the easy one. This one will, of course, go after Tonya. Right now, we don't see a melee. Or when all zombies have moved, then we do our reaction tests accordingly. But first, let's move all of the zombies. Here we are really unlucky, though that's one, two, three. Ah, uh, no, he cannot move in the house here because the house has two movement points, three, uh, he still has one more move, so I think he will move up there, so maybe during the next turn then he will be able to go after both of them, so I think this is beneficial. Normally they will always take the shortest route in respect to movement points, and rough terrain and buildings take two movement points. So let's see how this zombie will move. This would be two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's pretty much the same. So this zombie will basically end up here. So back was kind of lucky, but we still have some more zombies. So we have this one, one, two, and three. This one here, one, two, three, one, two, and three. And again, zombies can pile basically indefinitely. So, and this is basically a strategy in this game to really hurt those zombies. You really want, don't want to have them too spread it around. You want to have them as one big chunk in order to yeah, maneuver through the board here. So this was basically the movement. And now we would check for possible melee. And the only place where this could happen right now is up here with Tonya. So normally you would now take a so-called being charged test. And this being charged test is something that normal grunt has to take. So you would roll two dice against your rep value. Again, you will count your successes. But the so-called stars can choose their row basically but they have to fulfill the row from top to bottom so when tonya who is a star will say i will go here then she has to follow really from top to bottom everything that stands here but in this case this is i think a no-brainer she will choose this row here and the first line says those that can fire will fire and then melee she can fire so she will fire so again we will roll her die and this is the only time and place where you are allowed to shoot in the same hex. Normally when you it's your action, you cannot shoot into your own hex. But in this reaction, because the zombies are just trying to get into your hex, basically from a timing perspective. So you just have enough time to fire on that zombie. Okay, let's roll. We still want to have at least an eight in total. Again, we will count. Um, add up the rep value that's a one tonya special ability i will not forget that and now she's a crafty veteran so she cannot re-roll once let's do that that's a five plus five that's ten that's perfect so this is of course enough to kill that zombie but of course this will produce another shot token that's for sure no she would go into a melee but there is apparently no zombie here on the board which is a pretty cool thing now all the zombies have activated so it's again the turn of the or the activation the impulse of our players remember they roll one so all of them can now activate which is a pretty cool thing and again i'm really tempted to start with tonya and tonya will possibly shoot into this zombie here because this will basically free up one space where they can move around i think this is a good thing theoretically i could also think of thinning out the herd here but i think right now i want to be as agile as possible so i think with our first action again i will shoot towards this zombie here so there's a clear line of sight no 
rough terrain such we are still looking for an eight or higher perfect that's a 10 so this zombie is toast as well we have to flip this to the other side so we now have two shots fired from here so we would have to roll two dice at the end of yeah this round but for now that's okay now it's back's turn back is still in the house there is no zombie on her hack so she will of course try to search now so in this case we will draw a loot card and hope for something great ah oh, guess what the building is empty of course but at least we were able to uh, search this building here which is also a potential way to win this game so even if you are extremely unlucky and find don't find a weapon in any of those houses you can still win the scenario by placing a search token on all of those buildings she's now still allowed to move and i think this is what she will do she will move out of the house one two spaces here and i think this is where she will stay because i want to keep them together for once and want to be able to get into the house here as soon as possible this was basically the turn or the whole round so again we have to roll for those shot tokens here in this case these are two remember each four to six generates another zombie that's one additional zombie. Let's draw that from the back. So let's see what do we have here. And this is this zombie here. He goes one, two, three spaces up there, which is, I think, really bad news for poor Beck because he will certainly go after her sooner or later. I think we are still good to go and I think we still have some time so I will do one more round I guess so let's roll the initiative dice again that's a five and a four this is perfect again the zombies will not activate because their reputation is only a four we will activate with a four both of our characters can do that oh I forgot to remove that shot token here of course so this is really great so for once one character could move in here and one could take care of the zombie up there and i think this is what i will do in this case so i think i will start with tonya tonya will move one two three spaces here yeah let's do it like this and there she will try to shoot into the hex of that zombie up there. So again, we have to roll a die. We are looking for an eight in total. That's a one. That's okay. She can reroll that die. That's another one. So in this case, she really missed that zombie. This was really unfortunate. And I'm now really tempted to not enter the house, but really take out the other zombie first really because when i go in there another five zombies could show up and this can really get messy pretty soon to be honest so i think back will move one space up here she has line of sight to that zombie so she will also try to hit the zombie of course yeah let's do that she also needs a four she is not allowed to reroll that's certainly not a good thing ah that's a two plus ah that's really really a Pity. So we have to place another shot marker, this time on poor back here. This is already also the end of the round, so both moved, both have activated. So let's roll the two dice. So this, let's say, is for Tonya, this is for back. Again, four or more will generate a zombie. We are lucky, no additional zombies will be generated this round. Let's remove the shot token. And this was really a very quick round, so let's do one more. And I think this will really be the very final round I will record for today. This is a one and a two. So all of our characters will activate, that's for sure. But the good thing is in this case, our survivors will go first. And again, I think I will start with Tonya. I will want to take out that zombie up there because yeah, I, I don't want him. So let's try to take him out. Let's roll her die. 
3 plus 5, that's an 8. We already know the range table, so this zombie is certainly gone. Let's place another shot token here. She could still move, and I'm not sure if I want to do that. No, I think I will stay where I am for now. So let's deal with back, and yeah, we have to move in here. So I think back will... This is now really... I don't have to rush. I really don't have to rush. So no, I think I will move one, two spaces here. She will do better in respect to melee because she can have them re-roll another die. And I think I will shoot. So I will take a shot token as usual and I will try to shoot into that hex. So let's see. That's a one. Wow, pity again. She missed the zombie. So this was really unfortunate. I should have really charged into that space. I think her chances were higher that way. Okay, I blew it. So now these were all the activations of the survivors. They will all move. They will all move onto her hex. That's for sure, because that's the closest way. So now, because this is basically the end of the zombie activation here, and we will keep that shot token here, of course. And now she has to take the being charged test. And she cannot choose because she's not a star. So she has to roll two tests, uh, two dice and compare those to her rep of four. So let's see. So ideally we roll two successes. This would be great. This would be really great. No, unfortunately she does not. So she only wrote one success, so she will have to go into this row here. Those in rough or building hexes, no, we don't. We are not in rough or building hexes. Those in clear hexes charged by three or more enemy will run away. And this is really a pity because there are clearly more than three zombies. So she will now run away into a random direction and she will use her full speed plus her fast move ability. Fast move is another action you could take in order to get away. So normally this can be up to two additional space. So in this case, she will run away up to seven spaces. She will stop in a building or in a rough terrain or at the edge of the map, but this can be pretty nasty. How you will determine the random direction, you would just roll a die and then this one is a one, two, three, and so forth see that's a two one and two so she will run away into this house here again buildings stop your movement so this house is now entered pretty much a good thing the bad thing is when you use your fast move which she did because you always run as fast as you can apparently you will always get surprised so you have no chance of evacuating but of course we still have to draw a zombie card and guess what we just drew six additional zombies wow i think yeah she is most likely to take one or two wounds so here are her six zombies waiting in that house so she will be surprised totally surprised hey what are zombies doing here but yeah <laughs> this is how those movies are right so she has to jump into melee apparently those zombies will roll yeah all six dice she will only roll two of them oh you cannot see that and yeah let's see what comes out of that of course, she's still allowed to have the other side reroll one of their dice, but what are the chances? We are looking for high numbers here in order to survive this. Oh, we are lucky. We are really lucky. So this is basically only two successes. This is certainly a good thing. And she will now also tell them, hey, please reroll that die again. So if you're again lucky, roll a five or six, which we aren't fortunate but still this is pretty good to be honest so she rolled the zombies only rolled two successes so let's roll for back so she can still go for a tie yeah and she does wow that's awesome so this is a complete tie out of breath she runs into that house stumbles into a group of six zombies and is still somehow able to defend herself wow isn't that nice? Okay, but this pretty much is the end of the round. Yeah, that's the case. We still have to deal with those shot markers here, of course. So let's start with the first one. The shot stays here, of course. It would not follow back, apparently. 
that's a three so we don't see another zombie let's roll for the shot token of Tonya that's a five so we will see another zombie but still that all is good and this zombie will go down there one two three four five so okay that's pretty much okay i guess so sh far away he only has a movement of three so overall that wasn't that bad so we were really really extremely lucky here I guess I will end my playthrough for today. You saw a lot of action already. Unfortunately, we did not find an additional weapon here, but we also only found, um, searched one building here. This is, of course, really basically already a lost building. If you're not lucky and find a shotgun or something similar, this this pile here is, is, is huge. Not sure if we will be ever able. Of course, one could distract the zombies and the other character could still go in there and search. But yeah, it's a pretty risky thing to do apparently. And yeah, I really hope you enjoyed my little playthrough so far. And I really hope I haven't messed this up rule-wise. If so, please let me know. And if I totally screwed up, I I promise I will re-record and delete this video and try to forget it but I really hope I was doing fine so far. Yeah, hope to see you soon in my next episode of my playthrough of all things zombies and until then, bye bye. <laughs>